In this OpenSense tutorial, I'll be showing you how to set up your OpenSense router as a client for a VPN provider like Private Internet Access, NordVPN or any other provider of your choice using the new OpenVPN instances feature in OpenSense. This video is not sponsored by any VPN providers. The mention or use of any third party VPN providers in this video is solely for tutorial and demonstration purposes. I don't endorse or recommend any third party VPN provider. If you've been looking for a way to route traffic from specific devices over a secure VPN connection without the hassle of installing VPN clients on each device, then this is going to be the right video for you. Not only will we be walking you through downloading the VPN configuration files, setting up the OpenVPN client and creating the firewall, firewall rules, but I'll also show you how to implement a kill switch to keep your traffic safe, even if the VPN connection drops. So whether you're looking to secure your whole network or protect devices that don't support VPN software, then this tutorial's got you covered. Let's dive in. Sheridan Computers, IT, Communications, Support. The first thing we're going to need to do is head across to Private Internet Access and download our OpenVPN configuration files. So I'm logged into Private Internet Access, I'm going to go to Downloads, and then scroll to the bottom, and then we've got VPN settings here. And we've got OpenVPN Configurations, and we click View. And then we're just going to download the OpenVPN configuration files recommended default. So go ahead and click on that and download. And then once that's downloaded, it will give us an OpenVPN configuration file like this uh, with some of the options that we're going to need in order to configure the OpenVPN instance on OpenSense. So let's head back to OpenSense. Before we start configuring the OpenVPN instance, there's just a couple of um, changes that I want to make with regards to the gateway. So what we're going to do is go to System and then Gateways and Configuration. Um, so you can see I've got one DHCP, which is my default gateway. So we need to make sure that we've got a default gateway set, and that's what this upstream shows here. So this is uh, unticked by default, so you're gonna need to change this. So edit your gateway, and then find upstream gateway, and just ensure that that's ticked. If you want to do gateway monitoring, you can see that I've put Google in here, A844, and then save your changes and apply. And then there's one more thing that we need to change, which is to do with forcing the gateway, the default gateway. So we're gonna go into firewall, all, and then we want settings and then advanced and on this advanced page we've got this under multi one we've got disable force gateway and you want to ensure that that's ticked uh, it will be unticked by default then just scroll down save your changes and I'll go back to the lobby so now we've made them changes to the uh, gateways we're good to start creating our open VPN instance if I pull up our open VPN configuration file in order to create the instance we're going to need the certificate of area which is CA uh, so this is for private internet access, if you're using a VPN provider which needs a trusted certificate as well, then you'll want to copy that as well. So we need to set the certificates up. So we're going to go into system, trust, and then authorities. And we're going to go ahead and click on the plus and create a new authority. So we're going to import an existing certificate authority. I'm going to call this PIACA. And this is where we need to we've got certificate data here this is where we need to paste the data from our config file so under the CA tags we're going to grab them so from begin certificate down to end certificate I'm going to copy that and then we're going to paste this into the certificate data here and just click save okay so now we've imported the certificate so we can see we've got the description it's self-signed it's valid from April 17 2014 to April 12 2034 so I'll just verify that your certificate is imported properly if you you don't need to do this for PIA but if you're using another a VPN provider that does have an actual trusted certificate then you'll have to go into certificates then add another one go to import existing certificate and paste the certificate data here the same as we did with the certificate authority and because we're using PIA we don't need to do that so now we've got the authority we can go ahead and start creating the instance so we're going to go down to VPN and then select open VPN and instances most of the videos I've seen on these recommend that you like they're telling you to do it using this legacy client I wouldn't do that and I don't know why they recommend it it's legacy so it's probably going to be removed at some stage so we're going to do it through the instances tab so we're going to go ahead and click on this plus here to add a new instance in the top left corner under edit instance we have advanced mode and you need to turn this on i'll explain why in a second so the role we want to set to client description i'm going to set this to pia obviously it wants to be enabled and the protocol is udp now we need the port number as well so these settings we're pretty much going to copy from our configuration file that we downloaded so if i pull that up got protocol udp as you can see 
uh, I'm going to copy this port number, which is 1198 for OpenVPN. Bind address, we can leave. The type is ton, which is in our configuration file. So you can see it's ton. Uh, so the remote, we need to copy. Sorry, I don't need to copy the word remote. We need to copy the remote server. Paste that into the remote field. If you are using a VPN provider that requires a trusted certificate, not the certificate authority, then when you imported that, you'd be able to select that from here. And now PIA doesn't use that, but we do need to select the certificate authority. Now this certificate authority field will not appear unless you've selected advanced advanced at the top. So if it's not there, just make sure that you've selected advanced. And then we want to use the certificate, which is the one that we created. So PIA certificate, or if you can leave to default, next you're gonna to need to put your username in and your password. Once you put your username and your password in, the next thing that we need to do is under miscellaneous at the bottom, we have options. What we need to select is root no pull. Now this is important. You need to make sure that this root no pull option is selected, otherwise it will start playing with the open sense root, which you don't want, we want to handle them manually. Once we've done that, we're gonna go ahead and click on save and then apply those changes. So we should have our open VPN PIA client working at the moment so if i go to connection status you can see that showing real address virtual address so this is our pia address uh, and then it is indeed connected so at that stage we've got our client connected and connected to open vpn that's connected to pia sorry our vpn provider so now we just need to uh, configure the routing from within OpenSense. so in order for us to be able to use our pia vpn as a gateway we're going to need to assign this to a interface so if we head up to interfaces and then assignments you can see under device we have we can assign a new interface if you've got other ones there just drop down the list we've got OVPN C1 open VPN client PIA which is the one that we want so I'm just gonna add that I'm gonna type PIA in for the description add it and then save it I may run into an issue here because I'm running WireGuard Tailscale and open VPN and where this says OVPN C1 I might need to change this to uh, 2 or something because I did have an issue and I'm not sure if it was something I overlooked or because when I've got Tailscale WireGuard and open vpn running there's a bit of a clash there but we'll deal with that if we come to it so save that once you've saved it you actually need to enable the interface so either select pia from the top here or we can just click on it here and we need to head up and enable the interface so we don't want to block private networks obviously because we're going to get a private ip range and for configuration type we need to leave these set to none what we're doing is enabling the interface and then we're going to go down and hit save and then apply those changes once you've enabled the interface this should now be able to uh, be addressed on the gateways so if I head up to system just to check and I go to gateways configuration so now as you can see we did have our one DHCP earlier but we've now also got PIA VPN v6 and PIA VPN v4 ignore this Volta one that I've got here as I mentioned I also have WireGuard running through a WireGuard and I'm using it as a client through a Volta VPS if you're interested in that leave it in the comments below and I'll have a look at uh, doing a video on how to route how to use WireGuard as a client and route it through a, a VPS such as Volta Next up is firewall rules. So I'm going to go to aliases, head over to firewall. We're going to create some aliases first. And by clicking on this plus down here, I'm going to leave this to hosts. I'm going to call this PIA clients. What this alias will allow me to do is add the clients into this alias that I want to route through PIA. So for hosts, I'm just going to put, you're going to put the IP addresses of the hosts that you want. So I'm going to put 192168, uh, what is the IP address? So I've got a FreeBSD box that I'm using for this. So if config, 192.168.168.100 so under my aliases I'm going to go ahead and do 192.168.168.100 and add that in now you can also go into aliases I could have gone into aliases created an alias for that host and then added it in this way which is probably an easy way to manage it but I'm just going to do it by its IP address for this description and um, we're just going to put PIA clients for the description and we'll go ahead click on save and next we're going to need to look at the actual firewall rules themselves firewall rules and I'm going to select my LAN ignore these rules as I say I've got Volta running so we're going to go ahead and add a new rule so we want to pass traffic uh, obviously don't hit disable we want to apply the action immediately the interface is going to be the LAN the direction is obviously going to be in TCP IV version is going to be IPv v4 protocol can leave to any and this source is where we refer back to our alias so we're going to do PIA so this is our alias our PIA clients and then for the description I'm just going to put root PIA clients via PIA gateway and then under the gateway we have gateway set to default and we need to change this to our PIA VPN v4 all this rule is doing basically is we're going to pass traffic coming from the LAN in the indirection of IPv v4 uh, any protocol and the source is coming from our 
PIA clients alias. And then all we're doing is force, we're doing policy-based routing to make it go through our PIA VPN v4 gateway. And then save that. And just apply the changes, grab that, and send it to the top of the list. And apply the changes, sorry. So we want to make sure that our PIA client is at the top. Otherwise, if it's below, it'll get routed by the LAN. So we need to make sure that's first. Once we've done that, then we need to go ahead and set up our NAT rules. So again, we're going to go under firewall. We're going to go to NAT, then outbound. So for the mode, you can see I've already got this set to hybrid outbound NAT rule. By default, it's just set to automatic, so you can't actually play with it, but you want hybrid. So do that, save it. I've already got to hybrid because I'm using WireGuard as well here. So anyway, so we want to add a new rule. So go to add, and then we're going to want interface. Obviously, don't disable it. <laughs> you don't want do not that. So interface. So this is where we select our PIA interface that we created. So this is why we needed the assignment. Um, IPv4, uh, protocol any source address. We need to change this to our alias that we created. So this is the client, which is obviously the IP address of the system that we want to go through here, which is why I created the alias, just to make it easier to manage. Destination any translation target is fine on interface address. Description, we're going to put PIA clients out. The last thing that we want to set here is the important bit if you want to add a kill switch, because if you want to route traffic through your internet, your VPN provider, and it's not available for whatever reason, it'll go down the next rule and it'll go out of you. One interface, now you might not want that. So in order to do that, this set local tag, I'm going to put no one egress and I've not specifically set this to like PIA block non PIA or anything like that because I say on this system I'm using WireGuard so and I'll use this same set local tag on that and then when I go into um, do the kill switch later I can block them all by just using this no one egress just go ahead and save that and then apply those changes and then I'm just gonna go ahead and move this up to the top of my rules by checking this box here and then move selected rules before this rule so I'm just gonna do that so it's at the top apply those changes so you can see just to make sure I've got that in the right order. And that should be pretty much us. So let me just test that. So if I go to VPN, and then I go ahead and click on Open VPN Connection Status. Let me zoom this out so I can get the IP a bit. So you can see the real IP address is 212.102.52.66. So because I went and added our system under PIA clients here, 192.168.168.100, then that should indeed transfer from this IP address. So I'm just going to go ahead and test that. So if I flip back to my FreeBSD system. I do IP config. No, sorry, Windows. So you can see this is the alias that we added 192.168.168.100. So if I go ahead and do a curl if config.io, the public IP that we've got is 212.102.52.66. So 52.66. Is that what I said? And go back into OpenSense and take a look. 52.66. It is. So that's basically how you do that. And just to prove if I go into uh, file all rules and I go back and I have a look at my LAN rule. I'm just going to disable this for a second by just hitting disable here and then apply that. And I'm going to back to my firewall NAT outbound. You don't don't follow these instructions. I'm just showing you that I'll get a different IP address by disabling these rules. And I'm going to disable my PIA clients here and apply those changes. And now if I go back to my FreeBSD, you can see we've got 64.176.191.229. Um, so let's put them rules back. So I'm to enable that. Apply the changes. I've enabled my outbound NAT. I need to go back into my uh, rules, LAN, and I'm going to enable my PIA clients again. So with that, that's pretty much how we set up OpenSense to act as a client for another open VPN provider. And if we want to add any other systems to the list from this point forward, like if we have TVs or whatever, iPads, whatever device, and you want those devices to go out and simply need to go into this um, edit this alias, which we can do directly from here, and then just add the IP addresses or the systems of what you want. So as I said, you can also like, Go to aliases, you can add an alias. Now I could have done FreeBSD host and then set that to 192.168.100.100. No, sorry, 168.100 and give it a description. And then within here, I could have just typed FreeBSD host. So just make it easy for yourself that way. The next thing that we want to do from here is implement our kill switch. So I'm going to go through that now uh, because if we set our systems up that we want to go through private internet access, if that connection is not available, then you might not want the traffic to go di by directly from your WAM. So let's show you how to do this. I'm going to go back into firewall rules now on my LAN. When I created this uh, PIA client rule to send to route all the traffic through the PIA gateway, you'll remember I gave it a tag. So I'm going to go into firewall rules LAN and. We're where we've got our 
PIA clients, we're going to go ahead and edit it and we want to scroll down to advanced features and want to show hide and this set local tag. This is where we do no one egress. I should have put that in there before actually. Save that, apply those changes. So now that we've got that tag here, no one egress, we're going to create the blocking rule. So I'm going to go into firewall rules, but this time I'm floating. I'm going to create a new floating rule by clicking on this plus. The action is going to be blocked. Obviously don't disable it and you want it to match immediately. But under interfaces, you want to select your one address direction out tcpiv version set to four protocol can leave to any uh, source invert leave unchecked source any uh, destination invert leave unchecked destination any 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 port range put a description in if you want so prevent vpn traffic exiting one for example and i want to hit again advanced again and i want match local tag so this match local tag is where we're going to match the tag that we set rules we, we did set local local tag but this is doing match local tag save that and apply the changes so let me just show you that rule again floating rules i'm going to grab that i'm going to move it to the top as we've done previously by clicking here and apply those changes and then we'll just look at it again so i've just moved it to the top so it applies first because it's quick so if this rule matches none of the other rules will matter uh, so all we did there was set the action to block make sure it's this is important that it's set to uh, apply immediately so as this rule matches it just terminates the traffic you want interface so you're making sure that you don't want any VPN traffic out of your WAN interface. So we're ensuring that it only goes over the VPN tunnel. The direction is out, so we're just not letting it out. Uh, TCP IP version 4, the protocol is any, the source any, uh, and then just make sure that under advanced that this max local tag is set to egress and that will prevent traffic going out. If you found this tutorial useful, please help me out. Hit that like button to let me know. If you'd like to see other OpenSense tutorials, um, consider subscribing to the channel. If there's an OpenSense tutorial you'd like me to cover that's not on the channel, please leave it in the comments and I'll certainly consider it. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.